Hey kids, it's Dr. James, Dr. James Plains, looking at Bahadasaurus. Uh, before we go any further, I want to point out that this guy, I think, is at Walmart and Target and Amazon for like 25, 30 bucks. But if you go to, well, for my local area in Texas, we have a thing called Burlington Coathouse. We have uh, Ross, these stores that kind of sell things discounted. We got it for $15. So that's half the price, just heads up. And it's still in both stores. I've gone to a Walmart and saw it for the higher price and a Burlington like next door. And it was half the price, same figure. Anyway, uh, so Bahadasaurus, there's only two models of it. Older one here, newer one here. Bahadasaurus is really a fun animal. I'm going to move it like this to talk about it first. And so it's going on with this animal. This is a 2000 and no name. Or, I'm sorry, not name, number. And, huh, no number. Okay. Uh, usually they tell you a year, make. I don't know. I can't. I got. It was a gift from my wife a while ago and on Amazon. And I, it's not Safari or Procon or Schley or Papa, the company, company I normally talk about. It's a, it's a, it was a different company I didn't know, actually. So there's no name on it, so they don't want credit for their work. Anyway, so discovered in 2010, uh, described, formally written about in 2019. It's a very new dinosaur in the zeitgeist, and it was very instantly famous. I mean, it, lo it looks pretty cool. It has, it's, it's, it has these spikes coming out of its, like, its, its back, its neck. That's really cool. But of course, you've come here for the actual science and what's going on. So first of all, know this. Uh, this animal is a it's a sauropod, a long-necked dinosaur. And what's really special about that is that when you think of long-necked dinosaurs, you don't think of um, spines and spikes and clubs and things, right? But we now know from Asia and from South America, those things did happen occasionally. And so Bahadasaurus is a great example of this. Now, before going any further, I will point out that Bahadasaurus, we only found the skull and I think like two or one or two neck vertebrae, the very front one, it had a spine on it. So everything beyond that is essentially a, um, a interpretation, a comparison. Luckily for us, I've already done a video on this animal. We have a thing called a Margosaurus. Now, Margosaurus is... This is a safari figure from 2008. And so these guys are close relatives. I, I can see the family resemblance. I'm not sure what it is. Now, I will tell you that gut reaction when I first saw this animal, my first thought was it's an amargosaurus, but it's just, the spikes are going forward instead of back. And to give you perspective, I, I, I've heard this question from people when I do talks. So the question was, how do you know it's not like a male and a female? That maybe a margosaurus smells the spines go forward. Sorry, that this animal's the spines go forward, females go backwards, or maybe when they're young, or, or, or they have the spikes going forward, and then and these aren't to scale the figures, and they get older, they go backwards. And said, so, well, there's two things going on. First of all, uh, they're found in different. They're both from South America, both from early Cretaceous period, but they are from different spots. So, Bahadasaurus is from the. Bah by Colorado formation. So it's about 145 to 32 million years old, somewhere in that range. Whereas a Margosaurus is much later, well, not much later, but later at 129 million to 22 million years ago. So they're from different times. If you're looking at a rock layer, imagine how you make your bed, you put the, the, like the pillow first and then the sheet and then the blanket, the younger or newer thing on top. This guy is right after late Jurassic, this in, in earliest Cretaceous, this is still early Cretaceous. So they're from different times. So that's the number one thing to say they're not different uh, boy or girl or, or, or or a young and an adult. But the other thing to point out is that they are clearly close relatives. And because of that, they use a Margosaurus who at 40 feet long, which is small for, okay, 40 foot long is large for a mammal on land, but it is incredibly small for a sauropod long dinosaur. But luckily for us, and I've done a video on Margosaurus already, it's a very well researched animal. We have a near complete skeleton of it, which is almost impossible. And so because of that, when they found the skull, and that vertebra in the neck, the cervical vertebra in the neck of a uh, they were like, let's look at Bahasaurus, sorry, Bahasaurus. Um, they said, well, here's your comparison, right? And my example to you is this, uh, and I know kids don't have this issue because you're all full of energy and, and energy, and you're just full of un, just unused energy. Um, I teach. So the idea is when you are older and you go to a doctor particularly and the doctor checking you out, they're going to ask you like, if there, does anyone in your family have this disease? Does anyone have this concern? Because the idea is that it's a genetic connected thing, connected thing. So if you have people, like if everyone in your family has gotten like, unfortunately cancer, you're higher prone with likely to have cancer. Right? Uh, so the idea is that when you look at the animal's body and you're saying, well, what is it like? What is this is like this? We have most of this. Let's compare it that way. And again, every bone that they have the same of, they measured it and checked it out 
brilliantly, but again, it is speculation because we don't have the rest of the skeleton. So, that being said, with this guy here, we're looking at the spines, and like I said in the Margothorus video, the texture on the actual spine suggests they were not covered in skin. That's a really big question. Is like, you know, like a Demetrodon cell, is there skin along here? And the answer seems to be, as of right now, no, there is no evidence of that. Wanted to point out, you know, why is it so small? That's a great question. Uh, sauropods, long necks. So, the most fam famous dinosaur this guy's related to is called Diplodocus. So this Diplodocus branch, there's three different branches of their family. And so what's really neat about these guys is that the head, actually I like that how the head's turning down. Uh, the eyes of the dinosaur kind of veer upwards. And the idea behind that is the animal, you know, it's feeding low. Well, the Diplodocus group, their whole family, they're all kind of like feeding like this. They're kind of low feeding, low browsing animals, right? And so... That's, first of all, something you see in the design of the, of the skull. But what's really neat about this is that comparing it to the Plotica's, it's really small. And compared to the Plotica's other sauropods, it's really, really small. So what's going on is that in Jurassic period, for the most part, we have a lot of large sauropods. The Plotica's, Apatosaurus, Brachiosaurus. I'm mentioning North American Morrison formation, uh, uh, Barosaurus. And so the job of smaller herbivore was taken by like Stegosaurus, and the little ornithopods running around. And so in in the northern hemisphere, when the Jurassic ends and Cretaceous begins, we see the sauropods, a lot of them get knocked out. And there's new sauropods, but less of them, right? In the southern hemisphere, Africa, particularly Africa, Australia, um, actually particularly South America, Africa, and like India, we see a kind of a continuation of the Jurassic plant, a lot of sauropods, right? Uh, not as many like, you know, like hadrosaur duckbills and hornadosaurs aren't like, abundant, right? That like they are in North America. So... What happens is the job of being a large herbivore, there are other sauropods in the environment that are large herbivores, right? But the this group that the Bahadosaurus and the Margosaurus fall into is a family called Dicreosaurus. Now, the cool thing about the Dicreosaurus group, the family, is that there are very few toys of them. I mean, these two are the only toys I have of that family. There's some in Africa, Dicreosaurus itself, which I really want to find one of those uh, somewhere, anywhere. But not a very famous dinosaur in North America. And so their thing was get smaller. And we often, and now the ones in the Jurassic didn't have a lot of spines and things, but the Cretaceous period, they have spines. So when you're 40 feet long, you're not a giant. So say you're in South America, you have these giant herbivores, you're smaller, so you have spines to protect yourself. That's the kind of overall synopsis. It's more complicated than that, but we're doing, you know, we're trying to get to a certain point. So that being said, this is what, it's. this makes sense compared to the anatomy here. It looks like a, it's like a metal dinosaur. It's really cool looking, like just these spines. Because a Margosaurus, to me, it seemed weird that they were like swept back because it is bone. But I, my thought was, well, when you're feeding, it puts its head down to feed, those spines kind of move forward, right? They're like, they're sitting back like that. It's feeding and like this. That makes sense. This guy just straight up goes forward. Uh, as far as environment goes, conditions, you think South America, Patagonia particularly, you're not going to be living with Dreadnoughtus or Argentinosaurus. Those are late Cretaceous dinosaurs. This is the very early Cretaceous, like right after Jurassic ends, this guy shows up. And then they are they are essentially rock layer-wise layer replaced by a Margosaurus. Did they evolve into Margosaurus? We don't know. But the idea is that they are close relatives. They, they share a common ancestor if they, if they didn't directly. So, that being said, that's the, the Craosaurus in a nutshell. I'm, I'm expecting to see a lot of higher-end models of this figure because it's just a really neat dinosaur. It's very different. It stands out. Uh, the main event here, of course, is our Jurassic World figure, which is like this guy here. And as usual, the official scissors of Jurassic James will be used to free the beast. I like the unceasing noise, you know, the sword stop, you know. Okay, so... And that's all it took. Nope. Yep, barely. So... So with this guy... Several things to unpack. First of all, the feet, sauropod feet in general. Big picture, big. Okay, so I, I wasn't going to go into like intense, painful detail, but some people have told me in comments and online and in person that I go over too much detail and too much information, and it's over their head. So I'm trying to make sure I'm keeping it fun and simple. Uh, the feet are very simple, generic dinosaur kind of feet with claws. We know that sauropod feet. Uh, first of all, their feet usually have like at least two, three or four claws, and they kind of turn out like that. The front ones are often like this. They're often, actually many sauropods do not have these two bones here, the slanchy bones. They only have this one. So they're actually walking like this. And so these guys have these kind of like, these almost like hand-like 
almost elephant but extended feet with fingers kind of it's kind of weird i don't know i don't like it it's not true so uh the tail is made shorter because it fits in the package better that way uh toy wise i'm sure what, what does it do okay so we have the dna code that's really important small kids and then we have i assume you, you twist this you turn this wheel and it does this little action here I did read a paper once or so that they were saying how maybe they can shake, not this one, but Marcosaurus, could shake these spines, making a weird noise to scare off predators. I don't know about that, but it's out there. Uh, and you push this in a tail whip. Now, although the tail, again, is it this long? I'm more modern. I think at least this size, maybe that long. But it's not that short. You know, if it's, that, if it's that short, I'd be very surprised professionally, you know. Uh, the only thing I want to point out with, like I said, the, the, with, the, with this animal's model is that we see the spines are doubled up and they kind of go into in a Margosaurus, they are doubled up and they go to a point, to little points and then they, go, they kind of merge. So that's kind of assumed for this guy too. And this one does not show that either. Actually, kind of shows a little bit that the spines are doubled up. They get kind of closer and then they kind of merge into just one, this one structure. Uh, this guy ignores all of that, uh, but. I will say, and I'm not going to get angry. I promised myself I wouldn't. The one thing that, I mean, other than shorter tail, other than bad feet, the one thing that really kind of sticks out to the dinosaur is it's uh, it's it has, it has a beak. There's there's a, there's 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 a beak right. There's a beak. There's a beak on my sauropod. And the reason I'm making a big deal about that is uh, uh, sauropods famously do not have beaks. Uh, and famously, they found the skull of the animal. So it's not like I'm saying they only found that part, and I'm like, maybe it had to be, who knows, the rule breaker. No, we found the head. It's the part they found the most of. And to give you perspective on this, um, in movies, you see paleontologists digging up uh, the whole skeleton in the field. That's not how it works. You find a skeleton, or you find bone fragments, or something's exposed, and you usually dig around the thing. You cover it in aluminum foil, like in your kitchen. Take plaster, and you make a plaster jacket of this, right? After that, you take it to your lab, and then all the real work begins. <laughs> the hard, well, the annoying work for me, at least. I like digging. I don't like prepping so much sometimes. And so at that point, they started finding the face. They have, they have, they're online. You can Google image the face. I think it's on Wikipedia, too, you know. And so the reason this is annoying to me is that when I teach people, we talk about dinosaurs in their, in their mouth. Oh, I'll go over that in a minute. But, you know, why do dinosaurs have beaks? Well, the ones that do have beaks, particularly herbivores, it's because I always say, kids, we have forks and knives to cut and chop our food first, and then you chew it properly. Well, so dinosaurs don't have that, so they have to actually have a beak to chop it and eat it like that, right? I famously say, like a dress Jamesism, in, in science, you want to always say, oh, everything has or all of them, but, we, but if you were an herbivore and you were not a long neck sauropod, you had a beak usually, some kind of bill beak structure. And to put one on a sauropod is really upsetting. And I remember I didn't notice it at first. And I was like, that's a weird looking mouth. And I thought it has like a car keratin like kind of look to it. So it's supposed to be a beak. And like I said, I, I immediately went to the paper and looked at scans. It's like, there's no beak there. There's no attachment. Sauropods famously have these teeth like pencils to strip and rake the leaves down to swallow them whole. Uh, probably a lot of saliva to lubricate their throat. And then they eat all rocks or stones called gastroliths to crush the food for them. That is a very well-known sauropod thing. And the process of a beak is something that I just didn't expect. And with it being an unusual dicreus or something, maybe some kind of weird thing I never read about. But no, I looked it up. It's not a thing. And so I, you're like, why are you getting so mad with children's toys? Because like you're making it from scratch. You can make anything you want. And we know that we have a picture of the skull. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, yeah. So here's a big picture. So I'm explaining this con con concept. And what I'm going to say next is what I was taught in college. People challenge parts of it, but we'll just get through this and go on forward. So when finding dinosaurs, they were, you know, officially named in 1842. Richard Owen coins the term dinosauria, taking the Greek word dinos, meaning monstrous, and saurus, meaning uh, lizard, and saying dinosaur, terrible lizard. So that's a new word. I always tell people the reason we don't see the word dinosaur in the Bible, Quran, or Torah, or any, any other religious text, because it was coined in 1842 after those books were written. It was a new word. It can't be in the Bible, right? Because the word was made in 1842. And so the idea here is they only found a few dinosaurs or some things we recognize are not dinosaurs anymore. And 
their hip structures are pretty well known. So the way they define them are there's two major branches of dinosaurs, the Sauristians and the Ornistian. The Sauristians are lizard hip dinosaurs. The Ornistians are bird hip dinosaurs. Here's the example. The most famous Sauristians are the Thoropods. Thoropod meaning beast foot are the predatory dinosaurs like Albertosaurus here and Ceratosaurus. These are both from the company of Safari. And so those are Thoropods, the beast foot dinosaurs. The Sauropod or Sauropod Morpha are the long neck dinosaurs. So from now on kids, you don't say long neck, you say sauropod morpha, right? And so that includes our, our safari diplodocus, our argentinosaurus, our amargosaurus, and our bahatosaurus. That also is in this area too. These are collectively the sauristians. There's thoropods and there's sauropods and there's sauristians. Meaning their if you your upper hip bone, it's there stands up, and then their upper leg bone, the femur, like the hip comes out. The femur goes kind of like this and down. So it's like a ball socket that goes down like that. That is Thoristian hip structure, right? And this is an idea from the 1800s. So it's, that's why it's being challenged now because it's an old idea. But it works for the most part. There's a few exceptions. Yeah. So the Ornistians, the bird hip dinosaurs, those include groups like the Thyreophorans, which are the armored dinosaurs like Ankylosaurus and Stegosaurus, both safari figures here. They're Thyreophorans. The uh, Marginocephala, Margin means edge, cephala means head. So the horn dinosaurs like Stratosaur, sorry, horn dinosaurs like Styracosaurus here from Alberta, Canada, and it are called, my brain just went somewhere, Cer Ceratopsians. And so the idea here is that there's these little structures on the, on the edge of the head. The Pachycephosauruses are thought to be margin of cephala. They have these little bumps again on the edge, the margin of their head. And then, of course, the ornithropods are the iguanodonts and the duck bills like Parasaurolophus here, which are, all, again, all safari figures. And in general, they're all, well, let me put you to the side. They're all dinosaurs. But within dinosauria, there's two splits. There's Sauristia and Ornistia. Ornistian hips, where the hip bone for these guys sits up, their hip bones are more flat. And where this guy, the femur, kind of comes like this, their femurs go below like this. And so those are some of the earliest things in dinosaurs that when you're looking at fragmented bones and skeletons, not knowing what these things really were, the paleontologists back then were like, okay, or naturalists, they weren't fully paleontologists technically at that point. Uh, they said these features, how we define these major groups. And since then, we have found hundreds and hundreds of genuses and different you know, species, thousands of species. And so the idea is that what's really funny, though, is of the dinosaur Sauristian lizard hip and Ornistian bird hips, birds actually come from theropods, Ceristians. So the lizard hip dinosaurs spawn birds, and then the bird hip dinosaurs or Ceristians have beaks. So Stegosaurus and Calosaurus, or some kind of beak-like growth or structure, the, the, uh, the horned dinosaurs, the duckbills, they all have some kind of a beak or bill structure. And so for them to have, <laughs> like, I think it's kind of like all this background story to see why I'm angry. For them to have a beak on this, that would be an unusual thing. Now, is that weird? Yeah, many theropods with beaks, that, you know, like, uh, over raptors, the Gallimimate group, the Ornithomimates, they have beaks as well. But for a sauropod, it's just kind of weird. And that's why I reacted the way I did. And I didn't mean to yell earlier. It's just kind of upsetting that, you know, that really? That thing you give it? You know, anyway. So, that being said, that is the overview of dinosaur classification because you clearly wanted that this morning. And then, two, an overview of Bahatosaurus and why it's so special. Now, what's the big deal? It eats plants. Uh, there's only one specimen known, so there's only one species. And so, Essentially, what we're doing in paleontology is saying, well, everything we know about these groups can be applied to this animal. We know it's a dicreosaurus, it's an herbivore. We know it's, we have a portion of its head and its, and its neck vertebra. We can tell and, and calculate based on its cousin, a margosaurus, how long is it. So it could be somewhere around 40 feet long. You know, we can, because we have so many of its relatives and we have understanding of these lineages as part of the world, we, we can take those fragments and make all of this. Because many people ask me, James, how do you find a few bones and be like, it's this dinosaur? And again, I understand it's very confusing for somebody not in the, in the field, but if it's a, if we have the right bones, like the skull or, or, or that vertebra, like they found just the skull, we don't know it has spines. But they found that vertebra on the spine, okay, we know it has that, therefore we can apply all of this to that, basically, right? And so anyway, that's my source in a nutshell. It's a neat little dinosaur. I mean, I wouldn't say don't get it. It's pretty cool. But the whole point of this channel, other than just sharing weird stuff, is that I want to kind of like semi-shame the toy companies into making like better models. But I am more forgiving of Jurassic World than I am of like, if this guy had a beak, I'd be really ticked because you're supposed to be, whatever company you're from, you're supposed to be a scientific model. This is supposed to be a toy, and I understand that. That being said, I will see you guys again.
next week.